Hello, I'm Dr. Sace, and I put together this video as a art therapy project uh, using a dozen graphite pencils and a, a pad of sketch paper. And this is myself when I was about three or four years old playing with my farm animals um, as a studio of an artist, uh, a friend of my mother's, a uh, relative of mine. Um, I'm playing here with my, my pig and my horse, my tractor, and there was a room off to the side where I, I spent my time while they were doing painting. Uh, my mother had been an art teacher in the public school system for many years and retired when I was born. And here uh, she's going out to run an errand and leaving me with uh, Michael, who, again, a um, close relative uh, my mother knew for a very long time, so it was a, and I felt comfortable being left uh, with him while she ran some errands. Uh, during the time she was gone, uh, some visitors came by the studio. And the first visitor came by, and they, uh, Michael and he were talking at the other end of the studio. Um, I didn't see the person. I heard the voice, but only from a distance. I caught some of the conversation. Um, but Michael returned to the other end of the studio, which was adjacent to the off room where I was playing and said that that was his cousin Charles that had just come over and that two men were coming to look at his paintings. Uh, a number of people have asked me, is there any connection between Charles um, and the people that came to look at the paintings? I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, he wanted me to play quietly as the visitors came. Uh, he went downstairs to let these visitors in and he was gone for a while uh, five minutes maybe even ten minutes and I was a little concerned being left alone so I wandered into the studio and looked around saw his canvases and then I did something I wasn't supposed to do which is touch the brushes and touch the paints uh, one of the first rules in art is of especially do not put your fingers on the hairs of the brushes and other things like that, which I did, so I felt that I was in trouble. So uh, soon afterwards I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. I got a little bit nervous. Um, I had trouble with my foot and making it back to where I was. Um, I just decided to hide in the closet, and the closet was like right there in front of me, uh, just a few feet away, so I ducked in there. And I could see through the, the loo vents of the door um, a little bit. I, again, I was awfully short about up to the doorknob, so trying to look out, I didn't see that much. But I saw that there were um, two people that followed Michael into the studio. And they were talking about his art show and his art. And I could see through the crack between the two doors, one door was slightly open, and when Michael turned to get one of his canvases, uh, one of the men pulled a gun on him and somehow forced him over by the wall there. I couldn't see him. Uh, had one man's back to me. There was the second man, um, I suppose, holding him. Again, I really couldn't see what was happening fully. And I heard a muffled boom kind of sound and I could see them drag Michael over towards the end of the studio. They began to leave after that. I was still in the closet. I don't know what happened. I, I could have made some some noise or something uh, but as they were beginning to leave one of the men came over to the closet, opened the closet door, found me there and I was like quite scared at that point. He said, if I told anybody about any of this, that they would take my parents away and to a little kid, that was terrifying. Then he grabbed my shoulder, dug his, the thumb of his right hand into the, the scapula part of my shoulder and 
and pushed me over to the other part of the room where the gun had been left lying on the floor. Uh, he forced me down on the floor and they wanted me to pick up the gun in my hands. I was terrified, I just closed my eyes, kind of shut down. Uh, I already uh, messed my pants a bit and when I saw the body, uh, I was throwing up a bit. Uh, the, one of the men apparently picked up the gun and forced it into my hands. It was heavy. Uh, they told me, try to put a story in my mind saying, you found the gun on the floor. You wanted to play cowboy. You picked up the gun. You shot him. Uh, let's see, again, fabrication. Uh, other stories that came out later um, the next day or even beyond that. Uh, some Somebody said, I found the gun in a drawer. I, I, I don't know why. I, uh, uh, maybe slight speech <laughs> impediment at the time. Um, the drawer sounded like floor. Uh, but the, I was able to walk upstairs, which was, again, very difficult for me at that age because of, of my leg. Um, and this gun obviously was heavy. Uh, other people said that Michael committed suicide because he was depressed and that was an issue because Michael was Catholic and in order to be buried in a Catholic cemetery uh, from a Catholic church, um, if it was declared a suicide that would create uh, some major problems so uh, no one wanted to hear anything about that. Uh, I couldn't disclose what I was told because I was I was in fear for my life and the man made me touch uh, Michael's face. I remember one thing about that man, he had a yellow tie with black polka dots on it. He twisted my nose so I wouldn't forget and that's grabbed it like that. That's why my nose is still uh, a bit crooked even to this day. They grabbed me again put me back over in the closet and said, don't come out, stay there, we'll be back. And I was frightened. Uh, I was just happy to be out of the room where Michael was laying and where all the blood was. I had blood and other things on my hands. There was an old coat in there, like, like a raccoon coat or something like that. Uh, so I wiped my hand on the coat trying to get the stuff off. I also wiped my hand on anything in the in the closet, the boxes that were there on the shelves, uh, trying to get this off. I, I waited in the closet for a long time, standing, then crouching, and finally I had to go to the bathroom, so I didn't hear any sounds, so I snuck out and went through the area which was my playroom, which was semi-finished, and beyond that was the attic that had a uh, what well, looks like a, a mansard roof, a flat roof section in the middle, uh, surrounded by a roof area on the third floor of a fairly large home. Uh, on the way back, after relieving myself in there between the, uh, the Joyce's, uh, I grabbed a couple of my animals to, to play with. And I guess I imagined that Michael was the horse and I was the pig. and. Michael was talking to me and telling me not to be afraid and, and, and other things like that. Um, I sat in the closet and eventually I drifted off, fell asleep. And that's where part two continues.